Welcome everyone to the Moiski News for April 22nd, 2020. Before we start, I didn't realise until I started recording, there's a PMQs. There will be a response video to that on this channel tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not doing the live stream of it, it was pretty dead. But there are some key points worth addressing in a PMQ setting, including those that did video entries for PMQs instead of being in the chamber for obvious reasons. So do keep your eyes out for that. Today I'd like to talk about the Scottish economy, because it is estimated to drop by as much as 33%, which has put Nicola Sturgeon, which is so close to election season, under growing pressure to try and find a way to reduce the lockdown rules. In April, the Scottish economy shrank by 25%, and it is estimated to begin recovering in July if the lockdown ends soon, as the death toll is decreasing and infection rate there is an indicator that lockdown is in fact yielding positive results. But that doesn't mean the economy is going to do better if people are still stuck inside. Since the lockdown, 110,000 new claims for universal credit have been made in Scotland, which undoubtedly, much like the rest of the UK, has put the already rather silly system <laughs> in a bit of a difficult spot. The report where the estimate is 33% says... We estimate that during the current lockdown, output in the Scottish economy could fall 33%, primarily because of business closures and other impacts of social distancing. This result is close to that produced by the Offit for Budget Responsibility for the UK as a whole and broadly in line with estimates and models for other countries around the world. Along with GDP contracting, so has the labour market, which is where one of the largest numbers of our universal credit claimants came from. Despite the large increase... The current Social Security Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville, that's a lot of S's, I hope my microphone doesn't balls that up, urged all Scots to see if they are eligible, quoted as saying, It is welcome that people are claiming the support that they are entitled to from the DWP, and I would encourage Scots to look into what additional help is available. Even if you are not entitled to universal credit, there could be other assistance that you can access, so it is worth checking. In Scotland, employment indexes have taken one of the worst hits in 20 years, with a spike in unemployment-related web searches not seen since 2008. Now, while the report says the economy and labour market should recover from the outbreak, a number of factors could influence the speed of recovery, which would include the length of time the lockdown measures are in place for. The Economy Secretary Fiona Hislop has said, Our response to COVID-19 is saving lives but I'm deeply aware that the pandemic is having an economic effect that is already being felt across Scotland. The Scottish Government is doing everything we can to support businesses at this very difficult time. We want Scotland to recover as quickly as possible from this outbreak, and that includes rebuilding our economy as quickly and as safely as possible. None of us should be under any illusions about the scale of economic recovery, and as we have said before, no government will have all of those answers. That is why we have set up an independent advisory group to provide expert economic advice. And this will be crucial to help us deal with the challenge of rebuilding our economy. Which is actually quite interesting because as I was recording this, I saw that Ian Blackford, the paper pervert, was asking a question. And he mentioned the idea that Scotland wants to introduce a basic income. Not like a benefit, but like a basic income everyone receives from the government. Something which many are against but I know it is something that exists in some countries. And I know why they're turning to it, because it's their hope by doing that they can keep inflation from spiking where it might. And of course, in that way, they can also ensure that everyone gets what they need in the area they live in. But how one ascertains how much you need and means to assess it fairly equally and accurately, I'm not entirely sure. So whether or not something like that could in fact work is kind of open to interpretation. Because a basic income, for example, where I live, would probably be closer to £1,000 a month. That wouldn't work in somewhere like London, Manchester, any major city really, because the cost of living is so vastly different. Unless they intend to try and find a way to reduce the cost of living, which you can't realistically do, for example, if you were living in a privately owned house. Because there aren't really many regulations in the UK that would inhibit how much you can be extorted by your landlord. But it is an interesting idea nonetheless, and the fact Scotland are considering it, if they do it, it will be very interesting to see how they afford it. But it is interesting. 
And also it shows they do actually care about their people enough to willingly sabotage their own economy to do something that more than likely can't work. But it's still interesting. <laughs> oh, they're precious. With this, I'd love to know what you think. And by that, I mean both what is happening to the Scottish economy with it being in line with the UK's estimate anyway, but also what they're trying to do, possibly, to offset it and make things easier for so many people. So please do let me know in the comments down below. Thank you.